literally the only reason why she's here is because I'm sitting in her chair. Hi, welcome back. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we are filming from my cat's sunroom. It's technically my sunroom, but I like to call it Lulu's room because basically everything I own is Louie's, including but not limited to this chair that I'm sitting on that she is graciously letting me borrow for the purposes of this video. I haven't done a trailer reaction in a while and I felt what better way to kind of go back into that genre for this next video than to talk about the That 90 Show teaser trailer and official trailer for part two of their upcoming season release. Now, Netflix is doing this stupid bullshit where they're not releasing every single episode for the season at one time. They're releasing these in two chunks as if the anticipation for season two of that 90s show is just so intensely high that you simply cannot wait to see what happens in the show. But that's just, I guess, how Netflix is releasing everything nowadays. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Do you have any comments for the people? No. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert! If you have not seen season one of that 90s show or if you haven't seen that 70s show, and without further ado, do you want to say it? She said, let's get started. Sorry the lighting sucks in here, but like when does it not suck? You know what I mean? This is like this is just a different brand of awful, but I could not find a place to put my ring light in here. So I've had people in the past tell me that my trailer reaction videos typically are annoying because I pause too much and because I give way too much commentary over analyzing things that are just like literally not important. And I understand that's like not for everybody, that's not everybody's cup of tea. But the way I do my trailer reaction videos, that's like literally how I react to trailer trailers that I watch in real life. I literally pause constantly. If I'm watching it with somebody, I'll talk with them. We'll bounce ideas off each other. I'll zoom in, throw it on quarter speed time so that we could like completely assess the situation to make a judgment. I just love taking the tiny curated out of context clips that these production companies put in a trailer and wringing out as much information as humanly possible so that I can make a judgment very, very, very prematurely. I love to just be a judgmental bitch about any bit of information that you give me. And that's what I like to do in these trailers you know what I mean I feel like if you're a subscriber to my channel and you've seen my like hour plus long videos talking about certain things or the videos that I talk about only murders in the building where the video itself is longer than the episode that I'm covering in particular then you're probably somebody that's kind of like a judgmental bitch too and you'll probably enjoy this video and let's just lower our expectations I'm not going to rehash anything about that 90 show season one other than the fact that I just really didn't like the show that much. If you want to know my particular thoughts and opinions as to why, you can check out my video reviewing season one. I'll try to link it somewhere, but I'll probably forget if we're being honest. I also heard like a couple things about this season that I wanted to just mention before we get into the trailers. Number one, I heard that Donna is going to be the only returning character of the main cast other than Kitty and Red Foreman. Any of the other teenagers are not going to appear. I don't know if that's like true or not, but it seems like based on a lot of articles that are being released, I think that's pretty substantiated at this point. I also know that Netflix announced that this was going to be a season that was released in two parts. One chunk is going to be released in the summertime, and then another chunk is going to be released in October. And I know that's like a Netflix thing nowadays. They're doing that with a lot of shows. I don't know. I feel like you're going to kind of lose people at a certain point. People are probably not going to give a shit, but I know with Cobra Kai, they're doing like three chunks, which is kind of obnoxious in a different way. So Teaser trailer time. This is probably not going to tell us too much information, mainly because teaser trailers are just supposed to give you like little snippets of things out of context just to get you hyped and to remind you of the fact that this show exists. Ugh, when is Leia getting here? And don't even think about it. I get first hug. No boyfriend gets first hug. I said first hug, not first hump. I want hugs and humps. Oh, let's get real. Grandma gets first hug. That is a completely unhinged thing to say in front of somebody's grandmother talking about humping them. I know that he's a Kelso and he's dumb, but like, what the fuck? I already have things to say and we're like 14 seconds into the trailer. I promise I'm not going to pause this often, which is probably a lie. I probably will still, but let's just digest this first scene, okay? This haircut is fucking unforgivable. This is what my haircut looks like when I cut it too short and then I don't style it. It's like looking in a mirror. This girl, I do not like this character. I don't even remember what her name is either. I think it's like Gretchen or something. It's not Gretchen, but we're gonna call it Gretchen. I think she just has the worst line delivery ever. And I feel bad because I know that these kids are young and they probably don't have a ton of experience, but I feel like the way that her character is written combined with the way that she like delivers all her lines, it's almost like she's yelling at us. I and mean, I know I'm kind of like yelling at you right now. I have headphones in so I can't really hear 
what like the volume that I'm that I'm using. But I just feel like her character is so fucking annoying. One last thing before we continue, I'm very sorry. She referred to little Kelso as being Leia's boyfriend, which means that they're still together despite the fact that she cheated on him or almost cheated on him with Nate. Did they just not tell their significant others, Nate and Leia, what happened where they almost kissed before she left and now everything is just kind of stagnant for nine months where there's no progression of like what happened in their relationship or any developments or anything like that because the audience can't see that so we have to wait until everyone's back together nine months later. <laughs> Girl, dude, Teddy is a fucking mess. <laughs> Okay, that's actually really cute. Okay. So Kitty is a fucking menace. I just want to say that. And she's already blinded somebody and it's not even 30 seconds into the trailer. So that's like the saving grace of this show, to be honest with you. That was a lot of information to process. Let's go back. So we have the weed circle, peanut butter being drinked out of a straw. I don't think that's physically possible. On first glance, I thought these were two very long batteries, but it looks like he's holding containers of Mentos. But I'm sure whatever's going on with my King Ozzy, I'm sure it will be funny to a certain extent, as funny as the show can be. We have Bob with his curly white veneers, lovely, lovely Hawaiian shirt, very Jeremy of Love is Blind season six style. Yes. We have Kitty being a Gleek. I mean, Seth Green is like fine, but his character was really obnoxious. And I think he was like only in the show at the points where it started to be on decline anyways. He was like in love with Donna, I'm pretty sure. So what we have to have as many people as we can in the show. So why the fuck not? And this is giving me very like tantrum from How I Met Your Mother energy. Tantrum! Corporate wants to tell you the difference between these two pictures, they're the same. <laughs> This trailer feels like a fever dream. What is going on? Is that the guys from Clerks? Okay, this is getting out of hand. Would we just have anybody from the fucking 90s? Hey, Foot, wanna go on a little trip? Sure, Red. I just hope it's up someone's ass. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> Okay, that was a good red-ism. I feel like he didn't really have that many opportunities to like explain eloquently and creatively where his foot was going to go into which ass it would be entering. I feel like that was a good one. So yeah, like I said, not really that much information given the fact that it's a teaser trailer. There's really not much to base anything on. I mean, a lot of the new people, like new friends that it said in the trailer, I don't know who the fucking people are. It looked like Red was getting a strip tease at some point. I mean, it all just feels very chaotic. I guess we'll just have to find out what else happens in the official trailer. All right, official trailer time. Time for driving lessons. I am just gonna sit back here quietly. You won't even know I'm here. This is my first time on the highway. <laughs> they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Who let Kitty in the car? Who let Kitty in the car? Did we not learn our lesson from the first season? Kitty should not be allowed in the car with anybody who does not have a driver's license. Even then, I would be a little bit iffy. Also, this combination of people on the highway for the first time, I would just simply not live anymore. I would simply die. Bob's face, that would be me right now. Also, Kitty has blinded two teenagers within the first 15 seconds of each of these trailers. If you don't think Kitty Foreman is a menace to society, I don't know what to tell you. Now that I'm back for the whole summer, I'm really starting to freak out. You should be. Last summer, you almost hooked up with her brother, didn't tell your boyfriend, he didn't tell his girlfriend, and now we're all stuck in a web of lies. You're dead! <gasps> they know. They know everything. Okay, so they didn't tell their significant others that they cheated. Now, it kind of poses a problem of like, these things kind of just have to lie until these characters are able to reunite and then the conflict emerges from there. Maybe it's like easier for Leia to not tell her boyfriend because she's 16 years old and like 16 year olds do stupid shit all the time. It feels weird that the story just has to kind of stay stagnant for nine months. I don't know. Well, I, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll explain it better once we see the show. I doubt it. Also, praying for my man Nate. You open the door. Yeah, so I could slam it in your face. Women, right? I can't be this for you. I love the Rossi so much. Isn't it a little beneath you to buy a sexy outfit to make Nate jealous? It's immature and it's using my body for spite. Okay, I've talked myself back into it. 
Okay, it's weird to me. It's weird. Okay, maybe it's because I'm like a fucking grandmother at this point because I just turned 29, but it feels weird to me when these like literal children do things that are extremely sexual in their storylines or their character actions. Know that the kids in that 70s show were supposed to be like 17, 18 years old or whatever, but the actors who played them were like 19 and 20 at least. I know Mila Kunis was like 14, but you actually don't see her doing anything like super inappropriate. These people look like 15 year olds to me and to see them like talking about wearing sexy outfits or for seducing people with their body, it just feels like a little weird. If you're actually gonna interview here, you should dress more metal. Hey, I'm Leia Foreman. I'm here for the interview. You wouldn't be related to an Eric Foreman, would you? Cause that guy stole my smoking hot Don. <laughs> Sure. That's how I feel, Donna. That's literally how I feel right now. I forgot how much I hated this character, but you know, as long as he's from the original show, then we'll just take anything, am I right? Please tell me. Gretchen has Riot Girl written in middle finger cutouts over her bed because we have to remind you that she's super rebellious and we have to literally like put a sign in front of her bed to tell you that. Love the subtlety. I'm sick of chasing after you like I'm the only one who needs to apologize. Is it this hard with you and Nikki? If we get past me calling her grandma hot. <laughs> Is her name Nikki? I thought it was Sam. Why do you think I was the only one who got caught? I don't know, honey. My money would have been on the virgin. <laughs> So did they like shoplift or something and then she got pulled over because she was a person of color? I think that it would actually be an interesting storyline, but uh, then Sherry decided to ruin it with a joke. Is that- wait, hold on. Is that a LaCroix? Is that what LaCroix used to look like? I didn't even know LaCroix existed until like the 2000s. Wow, history is amazing. Dude! I'm gonna rock your chakras. some fun news to share. It's like a fever dream. You know how the house across the street is for sale? Kitty. Donna. Kitty. Donna. Red. Oh my Bob, God. we're gonna be neighbors again. Kitty. <sighs> Donna. <laughs> Okay, so he's hitting on, on Donna, but he's also wearing the same shirt. They got into an argument about how he needs to apologize for things too. He's wearing the same shirt. So maybe he needs to apologize for literally sexually assaulting Donna in the kitchen. Now I think we should address the Bob in the room. I don't like Bob as a character. That might be an unpopular opinion. I know he's iconic to the original series. I understand that. I love the hey there, hi there, ho there. Like I know, I know. I'm sorry to the Bob stands out there. I'm just not a huge Bob fan, but I think it's interesting for him to be an across the street neighbor because one of the things I thought was kind of challenging about the first season was like Kitty and Red are great. They slip back into the role perfectly, but they don't really have a ton to do because they feel very disconnected from the younger kid. I think having a person like Bob who is also related to Leia and the fact that he's also her grandfather and the fact that he and Kitty and Red have so much history together, I think that would be a good way to kind of maybe ease into giving them more story storylines and more interesting things to do even if they do have to do with Bob. Well, that we have the house to ourselves. She has the biggest mouth at school. People aren't just gonna show up at my house uninvited, right? <laughs> That's literally what we do every day. <laughs> His hair actually kind of reminds me of Luann the Countess from The Real Housewives of New York, which I'm currently watching right now. And there is a suggested video with her in the thumbnail right next to this. So it just, I cannot unsee it now, but okay. So final thoughts. Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot of nostalgia. I feel like that 70s show and that 90s show are kind of inherently based on a little bit of nostalgia because it's a show that takes place in a different decade. So nostalgia, comfort, the best of the decade that we're talking about is kind of like the bread and butter of these shows. It does seem like we have a foundation of like conflict and things that are going on with our stories and our characters that might overarch across more than one episode, which I feel like will be good to give the characters more to do. So I think that's definitely a potential for positive in this second season. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like it'll be fine. It still doesn't really seem that funny to me, <laughs> but it does seem like there's going to be at least a little bit more to do. I don't know why the guys from Clerks are here. I literally don't fucking know. I feel like this is going to be an improvement from the first season, but still not something I would necessarily willingly watch if I wasn't making a video about it. I always want to root for the best to happen. I always want to see shows improve because I like watching content that doesn't make me want to rip my hair out, if you know what I mean. So I really am hoping 
hoping for the best and I really do hope that this show takes into account what other people have said about it in the first season and made it better. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the trailers for that 90s show and do you think the second season is going to be better? Do you think it's going to be worse? Do you think it's going to be just about the same level of mediocrity of the, as the first season? I'm going to try to start uploading more consistently by doing a video every other week and that might not mean that I'm going to do like an hour plus long video every other week. It'll probably be more smaller videos and things like that and by small I mean like 30 minutes or something like that but you can start looking for videos for me to be released every other Sunday. I think that's going to be something that I'm going to try to hold myself accountable to. In the meantime I'm going to get off of my cat's chair and go pay attention to her because otherwise she will murder me in my sleep. So bye-bye.